Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God, hallelujah. Do you have your Bibles with you this morning? Amen. Well then, let's see if we can find something in there. Turn to the book of Proverbs in the 10th chapter. Proverbs, the 10th chapter. And remember what God said this morning when we opened. This is your day of visitation. Jesus is in the house this morning, amen? amen? So we are being visited by the Lord, by the Holy Spirit. And God has a question for us this morning. And the question is this, what will you do in the day of visitation? What will you do in the day of visitation? Proverbs 10, the blessing of the Lord, it makes rich. And he adds no sorrow with it. Now, I've been studying this for a while, and I've been looking at this for a long time. And uh, I sat back and I said, Lord, I need to know something. What is the difference between the blessing and the anointing? I've heard it said that the anointing is part of the blessing. But the more I look at it, I want to know the difference. And the Lord said this, there is none. There is no difference between the blessing and the anointing. The anointing is the blessing. The very power of God being rubbed on or smeared into our being to destroy yokes, destroy burdens, destroy bondages, and destroy the work of the devil. Amen. And he's saying he adds no sorrow to it. He adds no Excess of toil, no difficult effort, no grievous labor. In other words, folks, if we'll understand this, we can get over into the anointing without the works of the flesh. But we have to go there in the works of the Spirit. Amen? Thursday morning, I want to share some things with you today. Thursday morning... I woke up at 5 a.m., and the Lord just said, I want you to spend some time with me. I said, okay, so I got up. House is nice and quiet at that time. Nobody's up. Phone's not ringing. I went into my den, and I sat down in my chair there, and I just started praising and worshiping the Lord. And I can't tell you, I have no idea, but I left that den and went somewhere else. Not physically speaking, my body was still sitting there in that chair, but spiritually, I went off into the spirit realm. At 8.50, three, almost four hours later, the Spirit of the Lord said, I have something to say. Jesus says he's got something to say. You ought to stop and listen. Amen. Amen. And here's what he had to say. Satan has fired his best shot at you. It has hit the shield of faith. What Satan meant to be an explosion to destroy your life hit the shield of faith and fell to the ground with nothing more than a puff of smoke. Stay strong in, in the power of my might. Stay fully dressed in my armor, my anointing, from my word, my glory. All that I promised... All that I prophesied to you will be restored now. All my promises will be fulfilled now. Woo, glory. I wrote that down. I ran upstairs, found Lynn, and I showed her that. And her and I had a great time. We, we just praising God and hallelujah. Our time is now. Now, let me say something here. You say, oh, that's a great word for you. Whenever and whatever God speaks to his prophets is spoken to the entire body of Christ. Some of you didn't get that. Matthew said, Jesus wrote in Matthew, if you will receive my prophets, you will receive my prophet's reward. If you receive a righteous man, you'll receive a righteous reward. If you'll receive what God spoke to me, that becomes yours. 
right now. Amen. That's Matthew chapter 10 if you want to look that up later. Now, I want you to turn to the book of Psalm 65. Psalm 65. Hallelujah. Psalm 65, verse 4. Everybody there? Blessed. Shot blessed. So we could say anointed is the man whom God chooses and causes to approach unto God that that man may dwell in the courts, in God's courts. Amen? We shall be satisfied. Poke your neighbor and tell him, we're going to be satisfied. Poke him again, tell him, you're going to be satisfied before this service is over. Now, what are we going to be satisfied with? The goodness or the glory of God's house, the same glory that was in that holy temple. Amen. We're going to be satisfied with that. Now, drop down to verse 11. You, God, crown the year with goodness. And we could say glory. And your paths drop fatness. Fatness represents the anointing. So what is he saying? God is crowning this year with goodness and glory. The paths that God has laid out for him to crown this year with goodness and glory are dropping or dripping, if you would, with the anointing. Say this with me. God has crowned my ear with his goodness, with his glory, and I'm staying on God's path because on God's path, it is dripping with the anointing. Somebody give the Lord a shout of praise this morning. Oh, watch this. They drop upon the pastures of the wilderness, and the little hills rejoice on every side. The pastures are clothed with flocks, the valleys also are covered with corn. They shout for joy, and they also sing. Now, let me ask you a question. Are you going to let the pastures and the flocks do your singing and your praising? Hmm? Are you going to let the fields out there operate in your joy? The answer should be no. I'm going to do my own singing. I'm going to do my own praising. Why? Because God has crowned my year with goodness. Oh, well, now, wait a minute. Brother Jerry, you just don't know what I've been through this year. Well, the year ain't over. Hello. The year's not over yet. God said he'd redeem the time. So if we'll get hooked up with this blessing, with this anointing, as he said here in verse 4, then we can have what he said right there. Amen. Now, he said here that we, would, we could dwell in the courts of the Lord. John 14, 6, Jesus makes a comment. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Those are the courts that God is saying we ought to dwell in. Psalm 91, verses 1 and 2 they say, and I say this all the time, I dwell in the secret place of the Most High. I dwell under the shadow of the Almighty because I say, He is my refuge. He is my fortress. He is my God. In Him will I put my trust. What am I doing? I'm putting myself in the way, the path, the court that God has established. Amen? How about you? Psalm 91 ought to become a confession of faith of yours every day. Amen. Amen. Not just once in a while, not just when you're going to church or not, you know, those kind of things. That's got to become a part of you. Turn to Psalm 92. Whew, shout that again. Glory. One more time. Glory. How about somebody join him? Glory. Come on. 
Glory to God. Say it again. Glory One more time. Glory One more time. Glory well, this ain't baseball, but three strikes and the devil's out. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Woo, glory. My, my, my. Y'all there in Psalm 92, verse 10. I I'm going to try and read through this first. <laughs> the whole thing here. But my horn shall you, God, exalt like the horn of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. So anointing and oil go together. Mine eye also shall see my desire on my enemies. Mine ear shall hear my desire of the wicked that rise up against me. Verse 12. The righteous, have we got any righteous here this morning? Amen. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord. Are you planted in the house of the Lord? Amen. Then this pertains to you. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. There's that courts again. Jesus, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Those are the courts, and there's a progression there. Verse 14. Are you all there? Because some of you need to read this verse 14. God is about to take an excuse away from you for not flourishing. They shall still bring forth Fruit in old age. Hello. They shall be fat, anointed. Let's get that one straight. And flourishing. In what? Old age. I, I was, I turned on Brother Copeland the other day. I'm telling you, that guy's something else. 82 years old, and he's got more energy than some people at 25. He looks good. Man can still preach. Amen. Why? He has taken age and thrown it out the window. That age has nothing to do with his ministry. I, I was talking to a pastor this week and just, uh, he, he's, I'm counseling this, this man. He's getting ready to retire from the ministry. 67 or 68. He's getting ready to retire from the ministry. So we're setting him up with his retirement plan and all that. And I told him, I said, brother, you got a lot of fire left in you. Well, I know, but I'm getting old. Well, if that's your claim, Moses didn't even start his ministry till he was 80. Whew. And the man had quite a ministry. Amen. Pastored some three and a half million people. And I might add some three and a half million rebellious people. I'll move on. Verse 15. He said all this to show or reveal that the Lord is upright that the Lord is our rock, and there is no unrighteousness in the Lord Jesus Christ or in God. Amen? Now, let me go back to verse 10. My horn shall you exalt like the horn of a unicorn. The word horn there represents something. It represents our authority. It represents our strength. It represents our power. And what David is saying God, you are exalting, lifting up, making my strength even stronger, making my power even greater, and making my authority operate to a very high level. That's what he's saying. But look what he connects this with. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Fresh oil. Now, let me give you a definition of flourish. I'm going to give you these quickly. Flourish means to thrive, to increase, to enlarge, to grow, to prosper, to abound, to spread out, to expand, to make steady progress. And I like this, to be at a high point in life. In other words, we get in the courts and on the path of God, we are going to have a higher place in life and we're going to make steady progress in it. Amen? Now, what's he talking about fresh oil? If something's not fresh, it's stale. But he's also talking about here, not borrowed. Folks, we can't borrow somebody else's anointing. 
Let me give you an example. Acts chapter 19. Paul, miracles are going on in Paul's ministry. Healings and, and, and all, just, I mean, tremendous things. Well, there was a group of boys there. They were the sons of Sceva. They saw all this and thought, we want that. So they went to Paul and they asked Paul, how much are you willing to sell that anointing for? <laughs> and Paul says, I can't sell this. It's not mine. Well, they walked away and thought, well, we've seen what he does. We'll just do what Paul does and we'll be okay. So the next time we come across a demon force boy, we're going to just apply and do what Paul said. So they go a little bit further and here's this demon force and boy, they start doing what Paul said. And that demon looked at them and said, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but boys get ready because I don't know you and you are in trouble. That's Jerry's take on that. Those demons jumped all over those sons of Sceva and they whipped them, tore them apart. The Bible says they stripped them. They stripped them of everything. They stripped them of their mind, their will, their emotions. They stripped them of their spiritual nature. They stripped them in their flesh. They stripped off all their clothing and the clothing and the Bible says those guys ran away absolutely ashamed and embarrassed. Why? They're trying to borrow the anointing. You can't borrow it. Let me say this. You can't even earn it. Hello? And yet, we all ought to be anointed. We ought to all be walking in the fullness. Oh, glory. Whew. We ought to be walking in this anointing as long as we're on the paths, the courts that God has assigned. Amen? A number of years ago, I, I don't remember exactly when this was, 20, 25 years ago, uh, Patricia Abdullah called me and she says, we, we need a place to hold... A, a kind of a regional end time handmaidens meeting. And we were wondering if we could rent your, your building and your facility for that on a Friday night, Saturday morning, Saturday night. She said, we got a guest speaker coming in. She's very strong. She's been traveling several years with Rodney Howard Brown. I don't know if some of you know who that is. Rodney Howard Brown was from South Africa, came to this country. And I'm telling you, that man brought the joy of the Lord in here. I mean, there was laughter going on in his meetings. He, he's, he's still traveling around some uh, powerful, powerful ministry to bring that. Well, this lady had traveled with him and in the process of traveling with him, she had met Reinhard Bonnke and they did some joint meetings there. So she got to know him pretty well. And I told Pastor uh, Patricia, she wasn't a pastor at that time. I told her, I says, you can use the church. I'm not going to charge you rent. This is God's building. You just bring them in and have an anointed meeting. So she went back and told that lady, and I don't remember the lady's name uh, at this point, but she told that lady everything, and that lady told Patricia, call that pastor and see if he will come to the Friday night meeting. And so she calls me, and, oh, this is, this is going to be nothing but women. I, I'm not going to sit in the middle of that. <laughs> but the Lord started poking me, and I said, all right. Well, I'll, so I went. I came Friday night. Oh, she was good. She had a great message. Wonderful time. And she finished her message and she stops and she looks at me and she says, the word of the Lord just came to me for you. Will you allow me to deliver? And I said, sure, go ahead. And she said, she says, God has called you and anointed you to minister his gospel. She says, that's been on you all your life. Well, that was, those of you who know the story, my grandmother pronounced that. Well, I was in the hospital dying as a baby. And she says, God said to tell you this, whatever he calls you to do, he will put the finances in place first. You will have the finances to buy whatever ticket you have to get. Whew, well, glory. But I just left that meeting. It was a good meeting. It was something else. As a matter of fact, two ladies, when they came into the meeting, before it even started, two ladies came in. They got two steps into the door and fell out in the spirit in the lobby. Were you here for that? Okay. I mean, it was powerful. Well, I, I left. I thought, man, that's good. And I thought about it a little bit. But I let it get away. How many of you know we let things slip? 
God has intended to fund financially this ministry before he asks us to do anything. Well, that came up to me here on, the, on Thursday when I was going through that time with the Lord. And I thought, I got to get back over to that. I got to lay claim to that. That's mine. So I'm laying claim to it. So when it's time to build the new building, folks, we're not going to have a problem paying for that. Amen. 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 And we're going to be able to build that building the way God wants it. And also the size he wants it. The property is going to be available. Amen. Amen. Oh, glory. That was a little sidebar. Now, we just read this and the anointing and getting the fresh oil. We read the righteous are going to flourish. I've talked to the Lord extensively on this over the last few days. Uh, as a matter of fact, Larry didn't even get the, uh, the outline for this whole thing until uh, yesterday. Turn with me to Isaiah 65. Now, this is a contrasting part of the scripture to what we just read. All right? There's a contrast here between what we just read in Psalm 92 and what we're about to read in Isaiah 65. Isaiah 65, verse 2. God talking to us. I have spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people, which walks in a way that was not good after their own thoughts. In other words, God says, those people who have gotten off my path, out of my courts, that's not good. They're rebellious. But my hand's still there for them. Are you listening this morning? A people that provokes me to anger continually to my face, that sacrifice in gardens and burn incense upon altars of brick. Now that sounds like it's a good thing to do. But not if it's not in the way God said to do it or the place God said to do it. We'll get there in a minute. Verse 4. Verse 4 is why these things in verse 2 and 3 were going on. Which remain among the graves and lodge in the monuments, which eat swine's flesh, and the broth of abominable things is in their vessels. Now that's a contrast to flourishing, wouldn't you say? But the contrast is because those people were not on the path or in the courts that God prescribed. Now, what about the sacrifices in the garden? But notice he said, in the gardens of their own thoughts. In other words, they've gone off with their own thoughts in their own place and not where God wants them. Well, what about this burning incense which represents prayers on altars of bricks? He's talking about places that were made by man and not God. We've got places out there, folks, that we call the church that are under man's authority and not God's. Hello? And people going to these altars that are in those brick buildings and don't know how to pray the truth. The Bible tells us in Matthew 7 that the traditions of men will make the word of God of no effect. So if we take the traditions of men, and it was being talked about here in our class this morning in the Bible study, oh God, if it's your will, heal my body. Hmm. I don't know about you. I know God's will for that. Jesus took the stripes upon his back. I don't have to ask God if it's his will to heal my body. It is. Amen. That has become a tradition of men. And God spoke up in that class and he said, the only reason that my people are doing that, saying, if it be your will, so they can have an excuse for not doing what they're supposed to be doing. For not walking in my paths and my courts. For not walking in the anointing. Because it is the anointing that will heal your body. It is the anointing that will break that lack and poverty over your checkbook. Hallelujah. Where's the anointing in the church? Well, let's get on God's path. Get on God's courts. Amen. Let's get planted in the house of the Lord. And let's get ourselves to a place 
when we start to pray the way we should. God is trying to show us something. He's trying to reveal His will to the body of Christ. Amen? He's trying to reveal what He desires for the body of Christ. He's trying to reveal the very purpose of that desire or His will. And He's trying to reveal how we are to obtain God's desire for our life. And we just read it. It's God's desire for us to flourish. Hello? God did not mean for Israel to go to Egypt during the famine when Joseph was around. He didn't mean for Israel to go to Egypt to get their supply. He meant for Egypt to have to come to Israel to get their supply. But Israel, Joseph's brothers, sold him off into slavery, and that's where the anointing was, was on Joseph. And if Joseph had been allowed to stay where he was, the whole world would have been coming to Israel during that famine. God wants the world coming to the church to receive their provision and their supply. Now, oh, glory to God. All right. Go to Isaiah chapter 10. Yes, sir. All right. Isaiah chapter 10, verse 3. God asks some questions here. What will you do in the day of visitation and in the desolation which will come from far? What will you do in the day that Jesus brings revival and what are you going to do if desolation comes? All right? Two different things. There's two different things there that are coming. The visitation and the other is the desolation. Look at this next question. To whom will you flee for help? To whom are you going to flee for help in that time of desolation? Oh, this question. Where will you leave your glory? Will you leave your glory in the midst of the visitation of Jesus and receive his glory? Or are you going to try and keep your glory in the midst of the desolation? Folks, there is a desolation coming to this earth like never before. It's called the tribulation period. But for us, if we'll stay on the paths, we'll stay in the courts, we got a way out of that. Amen? Verse 4. Without me, without God, they shall bow down under the prisoners. In other words, without God, this desolation hits and you're going to be below what is a prisoner. That's pretty low. And they shall fall under the slain. For all this, God's anger is not turned away, but, shout but, his hand is still stretched out. His hand is still out there. Like he said, what we just read in Psalm, his hand is still out there. Come on, let me help you. His hand is there to pick us up, Randy, from where we've fallen. Amen. Oh, glory. I've got two prophecies here I want to read to you that have been given to the body of Christ. And those prophecies still stand today. One is from Smith Wigglesworth in 1947. Listen to what he had to say. There will come a time when those who emphasize the word and the spirit, they will come together and there will be no decline. This move will take God's complete glory, coming from the fullness of the blessing. There will be an outpouring in the islands of the word. There will be no gradual decline like there has been for other manifestations and demonstrations or uh, I put in there revivals. That's my take on this. The outpouring in the islands, God viewing this thing, and, and, and there has been an outbreak in some of the islands, but God is, re, is viewing this thing, the islands, land masses. That, that's the way I see this that the Lord showed me anyway. There'll be an outbreak, an outpouring on the land masses of the word. And there will be no gradual decline like there has been 
for other manifestations and demonstrations. In other words, this revival is not going to phase out, fizzle out, because this revival that is now here, that we're now in, is going to usher in Jesus coming to take the church home before that tribulation period. That's Smith Wiggles' work. Jerry Seville, and I found this to be interesting, October 2014, had a word from the Lord. October 2014, at the same time he was getting this, we were in this place hearing from the apostle Gary Wood on what God wanted for this church. Three years, that man came and gave us a step-by-step -step process of what God wanted for this ministry in this church. And it's the same thing Jerry's talking about. Let me read it. First, there will be a visitation from the Lord. That will be followed by a manifestation of the Spirit. Then will come a demonstration of the visitation and the manifestation. The body of Christ has been standing on the threshold of the greatest move of my spirit the earth has ever seen. It's time to step into my plan to produce my glory the greater glory. It's all right. Shout, my goodness. It's time for us to step in to the glory. It's time for us to get on the path, walk the courts where we're going to flourish. Amen? Turn to the book of Joel. Oh, we're almost there, folks. We're almost there. I sent that outline to Larry to post, and Larry sent back, man, that's long. But I'll tell you what, whatever it takes to get it done, we're going to be here till it is. Amen? Joel chapter 2, verse 21. Fear not. I need to shout that again. Fear not. Fear not. Don't get into fear over what's going on in the politicians, the news media, the school system. Fear not. O oh, land, what are we supposed to do? Be glad and rejoice. Not for what's going on there, but be glad and rejoice for the Lord will do great things. Hallelujah. God's got some great things planned for your life. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures, pastures of the wilderness do spring. Why? The anointing. Amen? That anointing that's coming down on the pastures from us is going to cause those wildernesses to spring forth, for the tree bears her fruit. The fig tree, which is Israel, and the vine, which is the church, they are yielding their strength. Can you imagine a time on this earth where Israel, God's chosen nation, and the church come together and start pouring out the strength that God has given us on a spiritual basis? You would be amazed right now to find out how many Jewish people Israelites are beginning to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and receive the power of the Holy Spirit in that. Be glad, then you children of Zion, that's the church, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rain moderately, and he will come cause to come down for you the rain, listen to this, the former rain and the latter rain in the first. In other words, the front side of this final revival is going to be an anointing, bringing the anointing from the old covenant, the anointing from the new covenant, and bringing them together, and it is going to be a storm of glory. Somebody give the Lord a shot of praise in this place. I won't be in on that. Amen. Amen. Listen to this. The floors shall be full of wheat. Wheat represents the bread of life. It represents Jesus. It represents the word. 
The floors of the church are once again going to be full of the word of God, of the truth. And the vat shall overflow with wine. That is the spirit within a person or the anointing. And they're going to overflow with oil. That is the spirit of God coming on the outside of a person or coming all over a person and being delivered to others. Are you ready? Verse 25. I will restore. I will restore. Say it with me. I will restore. That's God talking to you this morning. God is saying anything, everything in your life up to this point that has been taken, stolen, or appears to be dead, I'm going to restore it to your life with life and flourishing and prosperity. All of it. Folks, it's all got to come back into the hands of the body of Christ before we leave. Boy, I wish I could believe that. How about Israel? 400 years of bondage to the hand of Egypt. But God told them, before you leave, go get your stuff. Go get your payment for all those years of bondage. Now, I don't know about you, Rose, but if I'm leaving that land of bondage and I know I'm going, I can carry a lot of stuff. (laughs) I'm going to get me a wagon. (laughs) Whew. Uh, yeah, I got two hands, Larry. <laughs> Amen. God's fed up with the world having and spending his money. He told me this week, I mean, it came like a shout, Rob. I'm sitting there and just all of a sudden, I want my money back. I thought, well, God, what, what, what do I have that belongs to you? That, and that's not what he was talking about. I want you to go in and take it back from Satan and the world and get it back in the church. I've got an assignment, folks, and this time I'm going to carry it out. I'm going to carry it out to its fullest. This isn't getting away from me. And whatever he's told me to do, he's told the body of Christ to do. Oh, my, 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 my. Come on. I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, the canker worm, the caterpillar, the palmer worm. Now, the translator said, my great army which I sent among you, God basically had to release them because of rebellion. Verse 26, you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. Does that sound like flourishing? You shall praise the name of the Lord your God. That comes with this flourishing who has dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. We're not going to be like those sons of Sceva. Amen? Running off naked, embarrassed, and ashamed. But we're going to have to get off our paths and get on God's. Yes, sir, I will say that. You're going to have to get off all intoxicating influences. Every one of them. They're not helping you, they're hurting you. I'm going to tell you something. I I got into that Thursday, almost four hours. I didn't want to come back. But I can take that with me. And it'll be there every day. And it's like a high like I've never known before. Amen? It's up to you. It's up to you. God's hand is outstretched to you right now. And we put our mind on, on drugs and alcohol and things like that. Those are the entire... No, he's talking about a lot more than that. Those are included. But fear, anxiety, stress, worry, they can create things in our life and get our mind off of the truth and start to push us off the paths we're supposed to be on. Today is your day of visitation. Today is the day you can step out from where you've been and step in and step on the paths of God. Stand to your feet. I I just, just, come on, lift your hands and give him praise, give him glory, hallelujah. This is your day of visitation. Don't let it slip by. Did you get anything out of this today? 
Would you give the Lord a shout of praise this morning? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, I believe you've been to church. Amen. Lynn, if you... I'm telling you folks, there is a point coming here very, very soon, I believe, with all my heart. There's a point where we're not going to dismiss that service, this, this service. We're just going to go. So wherever we're at in the service, if you've got to leave, feel free to leave. But I'm going to tell you, there is a service where we're going to be here, and it's just going to go, and it's going to be an outbreak like we've not experienced. Amen. I want to be part of that. That last passage in Joel says, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Amen. Amen. And he's doing it. He'd been doing it since the day of Pentecost in that upper room. But again, man has let that fizzle out or discontinue. But like Smith Wigglesworth said, this last one is not going to stop until we leave. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this this morning. We thank you for your words that have been spoken to our hearts today. We receive them, we accept them, and we are going to walk your paths in your courts. And right now, we are going to flourish. We are flourishing in your courts right now with health, finances, love, relationships, Every aspect of everything you poured out into us today, we receive and we are flourishing in it. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Angels of glory, get out there and build the hedge, the blessing wall around every vehicle. Go before those vehicles and clear the roads. Make them clear and straight and clean for us. That as we go down the road, we go without incident. We arrive at our destination safely. And Father, I'm asking you give everybody here today peace, comfort, and rest. And we give you all the praise, all the glory, all the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you this morning.